A symphony of yellow and grey. <laughs> Smelling of rotten eggs. Do you hear the birds? Do you hear the neighbors? It is almost spring. Great time of the year. One thing though, if you had your trees outside in winter, this is what probably will have happened. The trunks get all covered in algae and at the base of the trunks you see moss forming. Do you have algae on your trunks? Do you get moss creeping up in early spring? Maybe watch this video. I'm going to show you two methods to get rid of moss and on top of that three methods to get rid of algae. Getting rid of moss and algae on your trunk is not just about aesthetics. It's also about the longevity of the deadwood and the bark on your trunks. Now, if you look at these trees, this is an Arakawa maple. So it's a rough bark maple. This maple is characterized by very nice plated bark. But if the moss takes a hold on bark, it stays constantly wet and the bark will start rotting. It will start deteriorating. And over time, the bark will just fall off. And the most attractive feature of an Arakawa, the bark, will disappear. They might as well get a normal Japanese maple that has a smooth bark and is much stronger. Same for algae. Algae trap the moisture. So you might say, I don't care. Trees in nature, they get green in winter and that wood looks green, there's moss growing on it. It is not an issue for me. Um, fair enough, that could be a choice. But it also means that the dead wood over time will decay. It will fall apart. Cleaning the trunk of algae consists of three different methods. Um, one is a manual one, one is a chemical one, and one is one using a tool. And before I get into that, maybe we should discuss first how can you actually prevent this ever from happening. And one of the easiest ways is to think about how do algae live? Well, algae of course live off water, rainwater condensation. So keeping the trunk dry is one very good way to keep algae off your trunk. Uh, one way to go, you could do that is by placing an evergreen, for instance, in a greenhouse. Besides putting it outside in a greenhouse, you can also put it in a shed. That would stop algae formation over winter to a large extent. So that's probably a fourth method of having clean trunks in spring, but it's not a method for cleaning it. Now, if we look at the manual way of cleaning a bonsai trunk, um, it's actually quite easy. You take a toothbrush, you take some water, and you gently brush the trunk with some water. Every once in a while, of course, you take a spray and you spray with water or you take a watering can and you water the trunk down so that the algae flow off the trunk. Um, that's quite straightforward. It is, however, a lot of work. And one thing to keep in mind when you do this is to always work with the grain of the wood. Don't go against the grain, go with the grain. That way you don't create any new little splinters coming out but at the same time also any soft wood that has created on the trunk will be eroded out. You get more structure on your trunk and you get the soft wood out. Now the second way is a chemical way. And I actually just use a chemical product from a store. I don't go through all big measures and go to a bonsai store. This is just a commercial product which you get in any garden center and it is used to remove algae from your pavers. Um, I just get it in full when they want to get rid of it all. They want to get rid of their stock and I just store it for spring. And this is actually already pre-mixed. This is mixture one to 10, I think 10% diluted. Um, important with this material is to check what it says on the label. If this product is not safe to use near other plants, so near other orna ornamental plants, then it's also not safe for your bonsai. But if it, say, if it says you can use this on your pavers anywhere, no worry about ornamentals planted along the paveway. This is fine to use on your bonsai. I just use a brush and I just brush the whole trunk and everything that is covered in algae. Now this has also another purpose and you can also use it as a prevention action. So that's actually the third way that you can prevent the trunk from getting all this algae. I use it twice a year on all my dead wood and it reduces the algae formation. This trunk I ignored, and that's the result, right? Now, having said all these things, so that's the manual, the chemical. Now, I also have a tool, and it's actually this tool. This is an official spray paint cannon. So you use this to spray walls or doors with paint. 
but you don't need to use paint. You can also just use water in it. And in fact, if you look at it, uh, you can use this and quite effectively it removes all the algae from your trunk. Here, it is important to realize that if you use this on a trunk that is quite solid, like this one, it is not a big problem. Um, if you use it on a trunk that uh, has bark that is quite rough and strong, it's not a big problem. But if you use this on, I don't know, a, a pine that has very flaky bark, then you run the risk of spraying the flakes off. If you use it on an elm or if you use it on a maple, the bark is so thin that you spray through the bark. And if you use it on a tree with very old, very mature dead wood with lots of fine grain and cracks, this will actually erode the dead wood itself very rapidly. Invariably, in my channel, I always get asked what is the best way if I present multiple methods. And fact of the matter is it always depends. Now, if you look carefully at this trunk, you can see that still there's little bits of green everywhere on the trunk. Um, of course, I can spend an hour with the spray paint cannon on this, um, but still there will be little bits of algae still on the bark. And also with just a toothbrush, I won't get very far. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take my algae cleaner and I'm just going to paint the trunk. So there's two things that I'm actually doing now. I'm not just killing algae algae that are on the trunk right now. I'm also preventing new algae to grow very quickly. Then if I add my influid in a week or two, let that mature. Trunk is ready for the next season. And probably until fall, I don't need to worry about my dead wood at all. Now let's have a look at what you can do against moss. If you have a tree with a very rough bark, like this Arakawa, but also pines fall under that, um, you don't want moss to develop on the lower trunk. Here you can see that over the last couple of months, moss has started to form. Now there's two steps to stop this from happening. One step is you take your, how do you call these things, pincet? You take your pincet and gently you grab a hold of the moss, individual fibers, and you just pull as much of the moss off as you can. And this can be very, very long work, but eventually you do get the little fibers off and most of the trunk will be clean of the moss. After doing that, you can then use the same material as I use against algae. So your pavement cleaner, and you put that over the areas that were infected with the moss and a couple of weeks later the moss will have died and you come back and you can just gently with a soft brush brush it off or again with a pincet take the last bits and pieces off. Now if you look at this trunk um, there's also a little bit of a green shine to the trunk on certain spots. Particularly here you see that some algae have de developed you see the contrast quite nicely here with the crack that has formed over the year and in fact this year I'm going to wash the whole tree down basically up to the finer branches, all the rough bark will be coated with my algae cleaner. Algae remover like this works best if it is used when the trunk is slightly dry and you don't expect any rain for a day or two. So that's why I put these plants in the greenhouse or in a shed so that the material can do its work. Right, let's take a look. It has had a week to dry. Now um, I've got my influid. I've got a little bit of ink. Let's start protecting this trunk against fungi and against algae. Well, actually the algae I already did. That was what we put on just now. Let's put some gin liquid on this. For the best results, you make sure that the dead wood is slightly moist. If it is too wet and there's still drops of water hanging on it, then the water will dilute the influid and the influid will just flow over the bark and will stain the bark instead of the dead wood. If it is too dry, the influid will not be absorbed by the wood and it will not get a hold and you get quite bludgy, spotty results. So this one was watered yesterday. I made the dead wood wet. Now it should still be moist.
What you can see is that the yin fluid initially stains yellow. As it ages, it turns pure white. Adding a little bit of the ink gives you a darker stain, which will reduce the whiteness a little bit and look more natural. Here it looks like I've actually used way too much of the stain and now it turns black. But here as well it needs to mature to get the real color out. A symphony of yellow and grey, <laughs> smelling of rotten eggs. Needless to say, this now should be protected from rain for the next day, day and a half, so it doesn't wash off. This is going to go out in the greenhouse, waiting for a day or two, to take a few last shots to show you the end result. The dead wood is done. Now I don't need to worry about that anymore.